and follow me. This life is not my own. It belongs to Jesus. I die. He lives through me. Whoever wishes to save his life, oh, I want to live my life my way. I'm going to do what I want to do. I've got all these plans and I've got all these dreams and I've got all these goals. There's nothing wrong with having those things as you bring them to the Lord and you seek His will and direction. But the idea is your life is really not your own. My life is not my own. I die. Remember, Adam and Eve in the garden chose to sin. Physically they didn't die, but that very moment in their rebellion, they died spiritually. And it is only by faith and trust in the saving work of Jesus, His grace, that you can be born again and have new life and be a child of God, able to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit rather than dominated and controlled by the flesh. Father, we thank you for this promise. Lord, we want to experience what it means to turn our lives over to you fully daily. Or we, we get caught up in the flesh and the enemy tries to remind us of ways to live in the flesh. And, and, and we, we do so many things based on our feelings rather than on your truth. Would you forgive us, Lord God, and help us to live as people who have been set free from the law of sin and death. Been set free by you, Lord Jesus, to live in that freedom of your word and your truth in your life. But Lord, we pray for someone who might be here with us today that has not yet responded to the opportunity for your salvation. And right now you may be speaking to their hearts about the reality of their own sin, just like the rest of us here, but that they never asked you to forgive them and to take away their sin. You not receive, they've not received your son Jesus. And ask him to come in and change them and make them a child of God. I pray now, even, Lord God, that your spirit is at work in their life, confirming the truth of this and the need of it. And they are saying to you, yes, Jesus, please save me. I know I'm a sinner like everyone else. And I cannot be good enough to be perfect. Take away my sin. Please make me a child of God. I surrender my heart and my life and myself to you. Lord, for those who have made that covenant prayer with you, Pray, Lord God, that you would help them to make that commitment of life, that covenant public by following you openly in baptism now that they truly have been saved. That they will be actively involved in this church or some church that's a Bible-believing and teaching church. That they can begin to see how to walk in the truth of your word, to walk in the Spirit. Or would you take this time of invitation? Those you're calling to be a part of this church family. Those you may be calling to ministry. Whatever it is that we need to do to respond. Or for some of us, just to acknowledge that we live in the flesh far too much. And submit ourselves to walk in the Spirit. May your will be done. We pray in Jesus' name. time of invitation is our opportunity to respond publicly and freely like Jesus did on the cross. Jesus did die on the cross. He died on the cross openly, publicly, bearing our sin. We pray to receive Christ. We want to give you the opportunity to respond. God's calling you to be a part of the church family. If you just need to come and pray. As we stand, as we're singing, you come.
mic should be on. Yeah, there we go. It's hard to follow your daughter. <laughs> and I want to tell you this, she's going to kill me for telling y'all this. Pray for her. She's really dealing with some health issues, a lot of fatigue. A 19-year-old shouldn't be dealing with that. So pray that we can get some answers for her. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to uh, kind of wrap things up with what the uh, is in the Cypress Heart. Um, today, Brother David had kind of asked me to, to, to give some bullet points for you guys on worldview issues to kind of keep you apprised of what's going on. Um, if you've read the article, you can see um, that I mentioned one of the first things I mentioned is the special session with the Texas legislature. Um, it starts actually a week from this Tuesday, so um, keep that in your prayers. There are 20 items that Governor Abbott has called for the legislature to act upon, or they can act upon. Um, one of them is a privacy issue, which is a lot of people call it the bathroom bill, but it's much more than that. It's more in depth. Um, also, there's several, like I think four or five pro-life issues that they'll be discussing. Um, so please keep that prayerfully in mind, and as things roll on for those 30 days, I'll try to keep you guys posted on things that you can do. This, of course, prayer is of utmost importance, but there are action items that you can do, whether it's calling a representative or a senator or writing a letter or an email. So I'll let you know um, how you can stay active on that. Um, and then also you'll see in your Cypress part, there's a, a flyer that says Freedom Rally. Everybody be sure you grab that. Don't just stick it in your Bible, because I know that's what I do a lot of times. Don't just stick it in there, or don't just leave it on the seat. Take it, put it on your fridge, or even better, <coughs> Give it to your neighbor, give it to a friend. This is a really great thing that they, uh, the Lord put it on a lady's heart um, at a Baptist church in Vider that she really wanted to bring the community together for an event like this. And so this is the second or third year they've done this. The speaker this year is, um, his name is Rick Green. And for those of you who remember Tim Barton that came last year with Wall Builders, Rick Green does a lot of work with Wall Builders. He's really big on raising up the next generation on constitutional principles since the Constitution was founded on biblical principles. So he's a very godly man, and he speaks from the Word and how we're supposed to steward the process. So come out and hear him speak. And then be, uh, be in prayer for that as they finish the, the planning stages of that event. And then actually that following day, I will be following Rick Green to Austin to uh, help him, he does a, uh, a thing every year for a week called Patriot Academy where he trains 18 to 26 year olds on basically how, how to become an elected official and how to steward that process. Um, and then at the same time consecutively while he has Patriot Academy going on, he has a separate um, event for people that are 26 or older, or older than 26, called Citizen Track. And it's for those people who want to learn more about the process and he's, Rick Green is really actually crazy because he's asked myself and a couple of my friends to actually teach this citizen track. So it's a quite a big honor and quite a big responsibility to be training people to get engaged with process. They'll be coming from all over Texas. So pray for me that I have time and, and wisdom and, and not of the flesh but of the spirit to be able to, to carry out the duties he's called me to do that week. Um, and then last but not least, I wanted to call your attention to um, a name that a lot of you are familiar with, the Sego family. I know Ted Sego grew up in this church. Well, his son, John Sego, is a gentleman that I do a lot of work with. He works with Texas Right to Life. And